beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boat. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. Good morning. And it is a stunning morning. I'm anchored up just off the nab tower, sat back in my little cozy chair, checking my rods. <laughs> there's no wind, there's no sea state, but it is forecast for rain this afternoon. And excuse the squinting, I don't want to put my glasses on because it doesn't look nice when you've got your glasses on on film. Um, but the sun is really bright. Tide's ripping through, we're on a low. I've already had two doggies. I didn't put them on camera. <laughs> what am I after? Well, today, a ray for this morning would be very nice. And this afternoon, I'm going to up anchor and I'm going to try a little bit of drift fishing for bass. I've done loads of planning for this. Oh, right into the sunshine. So if you can't see this because the sun behind it, it is the only position for the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's probably a doggy in this tide, to be honest. There's something, oh, and there's something going on in that other rod as well. It's all livening up. Tide's just starting to run. Oh, yeah, there's, another, there's a bite on the other rod as well. Just tighten that drag up. So there's a fish on the other rod. There's a fish on this rod. I can't quite call this one. It might be a small strap actually, the way it's nodding around. Either that, or this is a two, this has got a one hook flyer, so it's got two hooks on this one. It might even be a double shot. I don't know. Hard to call on this one. I th I'm, I'll put my money on a, on a smaller strap. That other rod's going crackers as well. There's something on that other rod. I'll have to deal with one at a time. <laughs> What's this one then? Is this a doggy? <laughs> doggy in the boat! <laughs> right, so that's the first one. And if we briefly have a look at the rig before I send this one down. It's the Solent Running Ledger. And there is a how-to of how to make that on the channel. I'll try and put a link up on the screen. And then for the hook snood, I'm sort of edging my bets. I've just got a running ledger as normal but I've got a dropper coming off it. And when they're together, they're quite close. So there's two baits close together. I just think that's more, attract more traction. Um, that's, that's the thinking. That's the thinking behind putting that one there. If I can move that camera again and get myself organized, we can do a quick bait up. On the table, I've got a mackerel I've already taken a fillet off of using my mustard bait knife I'm just taking the other fillet and sometimes this one comes out for me a little bit messier than the first because you haven't got the support of the flesh on the other side and all of that head section with all the guts together is going to go on as a single bait that's going on Give my hands a bit of a clean. And then the other piece of bait for that rig, which is another four row hook. I'm just gonna through thread a squid. I don't want all of that squid on there because if I'm feeding doggies, it's, it's a little bit of a waste. Um, so that are the two baits. And they're gonna sit very close to each other on the bottom double the attraction. He can choose which one he fancies, whether he wants mackerel, whether he wants squid, but hopefully something other than a doggy. Put that over the side and we'll lower that down. And then when you do lower it down, lower it down nice and slowly so it doesn't just all tangle up. I've got to check those other two rods, make sure they're physically on the bottom because I haven't had a bite on either of those, but I've had multiple bites on the other rods. I've managed to get myself organised a little bit. 
when I say a little bit, it is a little bit. I am still struggling because everything is going off. Just got to make sure these rods are fishing on the bottom or it's pointless them being there. These are the two new uptied rods that I bought. I bought rods, but I reutilized reels. Um, reels that I used to use for my estuary fishing are the right size, I feel, to go on the end of the uptied rods. I'm not actually fishing uptied at the moment. Everything is down tight because the tide is absolutely racing through. And as I thought, I don't think these were actually fishing on the bottom, which is why I've not had a bite off them. I'm fairly confident that they will go off sometime soon. Now they're hard on the bottom. That one's going already. <laughs> it's chaos, isn't it? <laughs> that rod's already got something on it. Just make sure this one's on the bottom. I might have to up the weights. Yeah, that one's on the bottom. I'd like a cup of coffee. <laughs> I would like to stop and have a cup of coffee, but it's all going crackers. Oh, <laughs> this, I mean, got that one, definitely. <laughs> oh. And that just caught that out of the corner of my eye. Oh yeah, that's a bit more. That's got a bit of a, that's got a bit of a nod to it, this one. Let's just turn the camera around a little bit. But you're gonna be into the sun, I'm afraid, because that's the side it's decided to take. Um, yeah, there's something quite angry on this one. My bettings will be an eel. See the way it's jagging? Oh, this <laughs> is... That's, that's going some. Yeah, the way that's jagging, I'd say that was an eel. But, it seems to quieten down a bit now. It's got a bit of go to it. Oh. Giving a good account of itself, to be honest, whatever it is. I don't think this is a doggy. Oh. There's a bite on that left uptied rod. That's going well. Mm. Yeah, there's a bit of weight to this one. Unless it's using the tide. I don't think it's a ray. It was too, too aggressive for a ray. My money's on an eel. And that one's still going there. And that one's going as well. So it's the left rod, right rod, this rod. I just need the, that one over there for a full house. <laughs> I need someone else in the boat. I might, if it's this busy, I might have to drop to two rods. I thought I was going to be struggling today, hence the three, the four rods going out. But this one's certainly given a good, good go of itself. I don't know, this doesn't feel like... It looked like a nil the way it was jagging, but it doesn't feel like a nil now. It's staying quite, quite down. Usually they come up in the tide. It's a shame that sunlight's right in the, in the way of the camera. Oh yeah, he's going. Now this, I felt the weight truly on this. I don't know. I don't want to bully this one too much because this one feels like it's got some go in it. And he's right on my, uh, right on the limit of my drag the way I've said it. And I don't, I don't go any tighter. I'm running 40 pound braid at the moment. I'm maxed to the drag that I want to set. I'm just holding it on my thumb. Just putting gentle pressure. Just gentle pressure, because there is some weight to this one. I'm gonna have to, oh, he's trying to take some line then. Just 
stop jagging. It's taken a bit of effort to get him up. Well, what a start to the morning. Fifth fish, and this one's that. Oh, I can see my um, I can see my leader. I can't see anything for a fish yet. What have we got? What have we got? Is this an eel? Oh, oh, we got a double shot for a start, and we are gonna need a net. Mm. This isn't going to be easy. What have we got here then? I think I've got a smooth hound and a doggy. Which is why it was the smooth hound gave the, the account of itself and the doggy just added the weight, I think. I'm going to try and net the smooth hound. Right, smooth hound is in. I think that's a smooth hound. I've got to get a closer look. And a doggy. <laughs> wow. That certainly went well. What a nice fish. What an absolute stunner. <laughs> I'm not going to weigh him because I'm just going to put him back. What an absolute stunner. And I've still got rods to check, so I can't div a dabber. Um, that's a small taupe. It's not a small taupe. Uh, sorry, it's a small taupe, not a, a smooth hound. Well, I'm going by the teeth. I need to check in a minute, but I'm pretty sure that is a baby taupe. Taking on a mackerel head with the guts hanging out that you see me bait up on the table. So we get this little critter back. Oh, let's see how he goes. And there he goes. <laughs> Cracking. Love it. I'm getting knocks and rattles on, on all rods at the moment, but this one's just gone off quite significantly, quite quite aggressively, but I've got a funny feeling I might I might have lost it because I was too busy sorting out another rod and I couldn't put it down in time. But this one just went off like the absolute clapper, so I'm expecting to see a strip bait and um and there's some weight on that other rod as well. If I was just up the clutch, drag a little bit. That one's only just gone out fresh baited. But this one went off like the absolute clappers. And then it's all gone quiet. And the mackerel's been taken. So it looks like mackerel's definitely doing it today. It seems to be separating out the better takes than the squid does, because the squid's untouched on that one. So it took the mackerel. I've only got one pack of mackerel with me today as well. <laughs> so I we have to be careful with it, if that seems to be doing the job. Didn't see any mackerel on the way out either, so I did look. <laughs> That's just gone nuts. <laughs> Dragging, this is that fish head with guts. Um, Okay, this is going to be interesting. There's something sizable on here, and this is just small hooks and mono. In fact, it's a, it's a four row hook and 40 pound mono. So depending on now how this is hooked, is whether or not this is coming in or not. But I'm guessing that is hound or taupe. And on the mackerel, I think it's taupe. <sighs> I might have to put one rod out with a wire trace on, and I have got a couple of wires. I haven't got many, because I didn't expect this. I'm not sure this thing knows it's hooked yet. It ran with the line, it's strip line. That woke me up. I was just sitting back in the chair, just relaxing, just thinking, it's nice to have a couple of minutes where the rods are a little bit quiet. I think this is going to be a definite net. If I can get it to the side of the boat, I don't think I'm going to get this to the side of the boat, to be honest. It must chew through the mono before I, um, before I get it anywhere near, especially if it starts thrashing around. But that was certainly an exciting take with the clicker on. 
why you always set your drags light. Well, light enough to hold, but light enough that if a fish does take and want to run, this thing's not moving, look. It's just sat there. I don't know, you got me a little bit confused now because I thought if that was a, what I would class as a swimming fish, a taupe or a hound, that would be swimming. But it's just, it's just holding in the, so this could possibly be a ray. I don't think so though, not with that take. The way that went, that went off like lightning. And I can't do anything about the camera and the sun. It's just unfortunate that the boat is sat at anchor. It's facing into the, and the camera is facing into the sun. They're definitely interested. It's one of these ones now where you just want to see what it is. He's definitely sparked my curiosity, whatever it is. It doesn't feel like a ray now because you usually feel the pulse and they'll usually rise up in the tide because the tide is run. This one's just swimming. It's just holding station in the tide. I'm getting a little bit of line on him. Him, her. But these ugly sticks, they're, they're amazing rods to fish with. They give so much action in, in the last third of the rod. I do enjoy fishing with them. I've just seen another big clump of weed go past. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want a big clump of weed on the line. Ah, he went off like the absolute clappers. He's still not giving up. Still just hanging there. No head shaking. Must literally just be just swimming into the tide. But I am nervous. Oh, don't turn, don't turn, don't turn. I felt it try and turn then. Oh, oh, no. It's trying to, it's a bit of a head shake. I can't give it any more than this. This, this is as much as I dare. Mainly because, got to remember, I've got a 15 ounce weight on. Probably got two and a half, three knots of tide. To, I don't know, probably not three knots of tide. Two knots of tide at the moment. Whatever switch these fish on, they've really gone for it. Oh, something's going on there. I don't know if that was the line down the side of its body then. It's trying to take line. This is out of my back, not because the fish is, the fish is heavy, but it's not because the fish is heavy, it's the way I'm having to stand. I'm standing over a fuel can and a bucket full of dogfish. <laughs> so I'm bent, I could be lent up nicely against the side, couldn't I? Let's do that. Let's get myself in a nicer position. Can't see my trace yet either, so there's still still some line to go. All I'm really doing is it's swimming. I'm just pointing in its head. Oh no! It wants to go deeper. hope this hooks up to it as well, you know. Just checking my other rods, make sure I've got no craziness going on on any of the others as well. Whatever this is, uh, it's going to be impressive. It's, um, oh, wow, look at the size of that. Don't cross my line, don't cross my line, don't cross my line. I've just had a, I've just had a tope at the back of the boat jump. <laughs> I'm not kidding either. No wonder I'm struggling. And I've got braid on braid. Wow, that just come clean out of the water. I've never seen that before. And he's, he's really woken up now. He's not happy. 
<laughs> this is where I could have done with someone else in the boat. Have I lost it? I have as well, he's off. No! <laughs> no way! I've never seen anything like that before. That was on a mackerel head. Oh, yeah, look, there you go. Right. So he's taking the hook. <laughs> he's taking the hook and cut through the cut through the mono. Right. Wire traces. I'm gonna sort the camera out. I'm gonna put some wire traces on. <laughs> Exciting, I don't know if that's on camera. I ain't gonna check it now. Um <laughs> oh dear, that was bonkers. Right, I'm gonna do a big rod, shark fishing, wire trace. Please tell me I'll put my wire traces in. Please, please, please. Because if I haven't, I'm gonna be, I haven't either, have I? And do you know why? Because I didn't expect this. Well, <laughs> I haven't got my wire traces. I've just looked through. I haven't got them. God, I didn't expect this today. Didn't expect this. That is absolutely bonkers. Be cut clean through that. So that's 40 pound amnesia, just clean through. Mackerel. <laughs> oh, come on, Mark, come on. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. I'm in again. I don't, know, I don't know if I've picked up a clump of weed or if this is all fish, but I didn't even see the bite. Oh, no, it's because it's a, oh yeah, no, maybe. Double shot. <laughs> it's a double shot of doggies. Oh dear. Yeah, that's why it was heavy. Just get this weight off rather than it clattering around the boat. Two doggies in the boat. <laughs> I'm into something that's a bit angry here. I was just trying. I've gone through my tackle box. I've got no wire. So I'm just trying to make up about five or six inches of metal links so I can put a hook on it, put macro on it and see if I can land one of these taupe. Um, but whatever this is, this isn't happy. Um, again, I'm only on 40 pound mono. It almost seems like a fool's errand. If, if the taupe are in here and, and, and they've moved into this area, you can see my rod tip going. It feels like something similar. I might get lucky with a, with a lip hook, but if that mono gets anywhere near its teeth, then it's, it's all over. But I am. There's, a, there's something going at the other rod there as well. It's crazy. It has gone absolutely nuts. This has got a decent bit of go in it, but I'm gonna to have to put a two pound weight on. Hook links, uh, metal links and swivels to the hook, which is, is far from perfect because I'm sure that kind of metal would put them off. Um, but if they're feeding like this, I'm willing to try anything, to be honest. I'll show you it when I've done it. And I'm just trying to avoid their teeth. Um, I've got nothing in the boat today that will... I really wasn't expecting it. And there's a lesson learnt. I'm going to leave one, one sleeve of wire snoods made up. This is, this is going well. Whatever this is, I just hope that I'm hooked in a way that I'm going to be able to get it to the side of the boat. That last one, I've never seen anything like it. Clear come out of the water come out like a torpedo. Obviously wasn't happy. All I want to do is say hello. <laughs> say hello, weigh it, put it back. <laughs> this is staying deep, this one as well. So this might be something of the same sort of ilk. What a cracking day's fishing so far. I've had about a dozen 15 doggies. I've had double shot of doggies. Yeah, you know, I've had my fair share of doggies. I've landed a taupe, albeit a small one. I don't know, five, six, seven pound, didn't weigh it. Just wanted to get it back in the water, get it swimming again. And that big one, I've not had, I've had a 35 pound eel on this rod and that was that and more, I think, to be honest. Um, oh, I can see the end of my, oh, I've picked up another, I've picked up another rod. I've picked up another one of my traces. And there's a lot of weight coming in with this. Is this a double shot? Oh, no, this looks like, this might be another tote. 
and I'm all in a tangle. So I'm going to be very lucky if I can get this one in. He looks like he's lip hooked. Let's get the net. Let's get the net, get the net, get the net. It's either a hound or a tope. I won't know until I look closer. And we got it. Well, oh, clanging weights. Don't want to do that. Chaos. I've picked up all sorts of lines here. I've picked up my other lines. He's a lively little crit. Oh, come on, calm down, calm down, calm down. Can't, don't want to put my finger in his mouth. A lively little critter. He's going straight back. He's smaller than the last one. Tope. First two from the boat. There you go, bud. Where you go? Lively creature. He's gone. He's off. Like a rocket. Like a rocket. <laughs> two tope. Two tope, no hope. There was no hope of getting the other one in. Not with the rig that I had. Um, right. Let's rig up, bait up, get out. So very quickly, because they're big tope here and I've been landing small tope, I've just gone through my, what tackle I've got and I've got swivels and clips. I've put them all together on a hook to see if I can stop the teeth from biting through my mono. Um, I need a wire trace really. And I've got them made up, just left them at home. That will teach me, won't it? So that's what I'm doing. If I catch one on that, I'll be chuffed to bits. <laughs> Let's bait up. Let's get a big old lump of mackerel one. That'll do. Tails, guts and all. It's all gone crazy again. This, oh, this one's going. And he's trying to take line. Uh, that rod's going. The other rod, I've put a big rig on it with metal to try and stop, if I do catch a big tote, stop it from biting through. And this one, I can't, I can't move it. It's just not even moving. So I think I've got a bite on the other, on the agility. I'm going to be a bit forceful with this one now because maybe not. <laughs> That's taking line. I'm guessing this might be another. It just seems wherever I, where I am at the moment, it just seems the tope have moved in. Tope have moved in, and I'm not prepped for it. Still going well. Mind you, there is a lot of current that I'm a little bit worried about that rod. The fact that it's gone slack line with this current with this tide that's racing at the moment means something's lifted a two pound weight and swam towards the boat. <laughs> and there's still something on it. I can see it still going. This is giving a good account of itself. <sighs> I'm only on small hooks. 40 pound mono. This this rig here I think is only a 10 hook. What have we got here? Yeah, it looks like another tope. Ah, and I've picked up another line. They're good at that, aren't they? That's why that other rod was going. Every one of these I've caught so far today, they've picked up another line. Oh, 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 bit athletic, bit athletic. Cool, the game go. He's in the net. Oh, cool, he's athletic. Ah, smooth hound. <laughs> Different species this time. A starry smooth hound. Oh, careful, careful, careful. And a frisky one at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. It's all go today. You can see the difference in the mouth. They got the pads rather than the teeth. The tope got the teeth. The smooth hounds have got the pads. I'll get this one back in the water. <laughs> and there he goes. Two tope landed, one lost. Pfft, dozen to 15 doggies. 
something like that. Um, and that right hand rod has got a chain link of terminal tackle. I've just pieced it all together with a hook with a big piece of macro on it. So if there's any more of those larger tote, the, like the one that beat me up earlier, um, might have a chance of getting it to the boat. At least enough to be able to see it. That one that came out of the water earlier, I'm desperate to check the camera, but I haven't even had a drink. I'm gonna stop now, I'm gonna have a drink. I'm not even gonna put that one in the water. I'm gonna have something to eat and a drink. It's all go. And the sun is shining. It was forecast rain. I can see the clouds building. And I was in two minds whether I put the shelter, the, the, the little cuddy over the little cover. Um, but at the moment, I haven't got five minutes to myself. It is absolute bonkers. I finally got round to a brew and something to eat. Tide is ripping through here now and I've got two pound weights on two rods. I've got one rod, two pound weight and a very small live bait whiting. Oh, and that rod's going. <clears throat> um, just as I was about to chill, have a coffee, have something to eat. This rod's going crackers. I don't know if I've lost it, because it took me a while to put my drink down and lift the rod up. And I've got a funny feeling. This is a this was a live bait waiting on the end of it. Be interesting to see what state the waiting's in. <laughs> there are definitely toothy critters down there. Just get that in. Um, yeah, that was a whole live waiting. <laughs> There's toothy critters down there. That's absolutely stonk, man. Right, that. I might just put it back in. Just the head. If it liked the rest of it, it might want the head. Because I haven't got the right kit for this sort of fishing. And, and, and to be honest, you know, I am trying my best, but I'm not very well prepared for what's going on now. Um, I'm gonna lift and shift. The plan was always to pack up at lunchtime, pack all this sort of fishing gear up, and then go one rod and drift the banks for bass, just because I'd like to try it. I've never tried it. I, Wayne showed me. I tried it for the first time with Wayne. I've got soft lures, booms, fluoro carbon traces. Um, I've got a mark to try and I've got a fish finder. So I'm going to swap over fuel tanks in a minute. Pack this gear up. If one of these toothy critters, I need a toothy critter to take the right rod. <laughs> He's just bit half my ting off on the left rod. and come out here another day better prepared. Wire traces in my kit. This one's just got crackers, but this is, this is with fresh mackerel, and it's, um, but it's only on a mono. So I'll be very lucky to get this in. I want the bite on the other rod that I've made up. It's funny that it's, they're going for everything but that one. That's the one that I think I'd have the best chance of landing one on. Oh, yeah, this is, and they always want to cross lines, don't they? They always want to go across. I'm trying to steer them away from the other line, make him right for it. Swimming sideways across the tide, look, across the current. I don't want to pick up that other line. Is it above it or under it? It's under it. Oh, I've got to go under it. All sixes and sevens, he's giving me a run around. This is significant, this one as well, the rod, this is quite a heavy rod, this is a 30 pound rod. I'll be very surprised if I get this to the boat. It's swimming well. Just make sure my clutch isn't too stiff, so it's got the chance to take a line if it, if it does run. Just put the net away, because I thought, right, I'll start having a tidy up, and then whatever this is has come along. Oh, big clump of weed, don't want that. Oh, I can see my tray, and yeah, this, this looks like another tote. And I'm only on mono. If 
I take too long sorting this net out, I'm going to lose it. So I have seen it briefly. And then I'll let him take a bit of line while I sort the net out. I can see my trace, I can see my weight. And I can just see his outline. Oh, he's a sleek looking fish. It's a lovely looking fish. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he's got some fight in him. Shaking his head. Oh. <laughs> that two pound weight isn't helping. Every time he shakes his head, he's shaking that weight. He's in the net. He's in the net. Oh. Got to watch that. Oh, and my net's just broke. <laughs> Let's get rid of this. Oh, it's all chaos. Get rid of this two pound weight. I hate two pound weights. Let's get this fish in. Ah, oh, break my own net. Oh. <laughs> and there we have it. A taupe. Third one on the boat. The rod that I thought would catch one hasn't. What an outstanding creature. Look at the size of that. And they're so strong. So strong. Absolutely stunning. This is my PB. I know because that's the biggest one I've caught. Um, never really targeted them before and I'm catching them by accident today. Who'd figure? Let's get them sorted, get them back in. So this one was showing about eight pounds. It was just above, just below. And away he goes. That's down to the depths. <laughs> Didn't even need to hold or swim him. He was just gone. I'm in for a bit of a gamble. I've got one left. I've got one left and I've got a rig that would take a big fish. I.e. I've got some metal work on it. So that last one, eight pound, I had to fight light because I'm only on mono and if it so much as touches their teeth, if it's not hooked right, they're a goner. Um, so I'm seriously contemplating my last macro of the day. I could split it and go two. I'm thinking, I'm going for broke. There's a bit of weight on this actually. <laughs> I didn't see a bite on this, but, oh, hang on. There's something there. Unless I've picked up a clump of weed, nothing's head shaking, nothing's doing. But there's definitely some weight, but hold the front door. I don't know what this is, you know. There's a bit of weight here. I didn't even see a bite. Because I've been concentrating on everything else. This could have gone earlier and I just missed it. What is it? Oh, it's a big doggy. <laughs> it's a dogfish. <laughs> that might have been on there a while actually because I didn't see that. I know there's monsters down there. I know there's monsters down there. And like I tried to show earlier on, what I've actually done is I've just pieced together some obbins and jobbins from out of my tackle box, a four row hook, and I'm tempted, tail off. And this is a beat up old mackerel. It's been in and out of the freezer. It's really, no, when they go really mushy, just stop it aeroplaning in the water, right through the nose, with all the bits and pieces. See if something's, see if something's tempted to take that. Now I know it might be beneficial to have a hook further down the body and it might do what it did to me earlier and just take half of it. Um, I ain't got no elastic either. <laughs> so I'm just doing that. I'm all a little bit hot and sweaty. Just lifted the anchor, stowed all the warp, make sure all the chain's tucked away and the anchor's all the way. As you can see, there's the nab tower in the background. Just get it in shot. There we go. Nab tower in the background. Weren't fish fishing a million miles away from there and the tope here. So really interesting. So I was going to do something else this afternoon, but then I've suddenly thought, got to make hay while the sun shines. So the plan is race for home, avoid the squally rainy showers that's forecast this, this afternoon, go home, clean my rigs, get my stuff tidied up, get some mackerel ready for tomorrow, and some wire traces. 
I'm going to make some wire traces up. Make some wire traces up and prep for a day, two rods only, because four rods out, it's not good. Two rods only, make some decent beefy rigs up and come out here and fish the same scenario tomorrow. You know two days are never the same, but I'm going to fish the same scenario tomorrow and see what happens. Bit of a comparison. Anyway, I'm off home. Take care, tight lines, happy fishing. I hope to spend some time with you again sometime soon. From me, from here, for now, and the toothy critters, it's goodbye. Take care and I'll see you soon.